This is episode 31 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Hello, and welcome to Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. And we're always hoping for the former. Today's question comes from a collection of questions that I've gotten having to deal with um, scriptures that I focused on when I was going through kind of my lowest lows. But when I went to think about the ones that stand out to me the most, there was kind of a progression of scriptures that, that you know, they helped me in certain, certain parts of my experience. And then, you know, those different scriptures come, come across as important or as kind of vital to different phases of kind of the rebuilding process. So I thought I would go through the four scriptures that have kind of carried me through from like the lowest lows to like what I use today. For those of you that are unfamiliar with my lowest lows, you can always check out uh, this book right here. It is on Amazon and every pretty much every place else you can find books. Um, links and stuff, everything are in the show notes. Feel free to check it out. It is not pleasant, but it's. I tried to make it as funny as possible, so uh, whatever. So, so today's question um, is, what are your favorite scriptures. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, take you from that journey of when I was really low to moving up. So the first scripture that that I used, actually, you know what? Let's backtrack. So I was not raised Christian. I wasn't really raised anything. Went to church every once in a while. Really, we I, I like to go because my mom said we could have donuts afterwards. So that's kind of my how I was brought up with with religion didn't really have didn't really have any my mom wanted to make it so my sister and I had a choice my dad was cool with that he grew up pretty strict catholic so he was kind of done with church so that's kind of what we did we went every once in a while and not consistently and, and all that stuff so fast forward 25 years later when my life is completely falling apart and I'm stressed out and I put myself in situations that are extremely uncomfortable and stupid and dumb and I don't really know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it and I had no place left to turn, I started to pray. And I didn't necessarily have anything in particular that I was praying to. I was praying to a God, not the God. Or I was praying, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing because I didn't know what I was doing. So I started praying and wanted to just, I was basically praying, please get me out of this. Please give me some clarity. Please show me the way. And I was desperate. And up until that point, I had a bunch of secrets. And up until that point, I was not really dealing with them because of you, people don't deal with secrets. And if you want to listen to episode 30 about secrets ruining your life, that kind of sums up kind of what I was doing. It was I was telling myself lies. I was not dealing with what I was doing. I didn't really understand why I was doing what I was doing. I was totally lost. So what I did, I started to pray. Please, you know, please give me some clarity. And I got an immense amount of clarity. I, secrets came out. And most secrets came out. I should say that, not all of them. Most secrets came out. I had been praying and things started to clear up. So I thought, well, maybe I should go to church and go see a therapist and all these things. So I started implementing these things that I was wanting to do, but couldn't admit to do, couldn't admit to why I was doing them. And because then that would mean I'd have to explain all the stupid crap I was doing, which was freaking stupid. And I started going to church. They had a new pastor. He was awesome connected, you know, really connected with what he was saying and how he was saying it, and um, became a Christian, got baptized. The funny thing is, pretty much to the day that I got baptized, that's kind of when things started unraveling for me. About a month later, I get arrested, and my life is completely blown up. But 
because of my new faith, I knew it was for a reason. I knew that I had to be, like I said, like most of my dirt and secrets and stuff had come out, but not all of them. Now they were all out. Everything was on the table. And again, you want to read about it, this book, have fun. Um, and I, I knew it was for a reason. Like I knew I had to clean everything out and I had to rebuild with no BS. Like I had to make sure my foundation was strong. And up to that point, my foundation wasn't strong. The first scripture that, that really helped me, and this really was like, this is what helped me for the next like two years. I really only sat on this one scripture. This was like the one thing. I even have it tattooed on my arm. Like that's how big it was. So the first scripture that really that I really locked in on when going through some really, really tough, st- like really tough stuff was uh, James 1, 2 through 4, which is, and I'm just going to read it. So consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So I was patient. I just sat back and I waited. And through the trial, through the media coverage, through the embarrassment, through me just absolutely hating myself and crying all the time and being just depressed and my life falling apart and losing jobs and just through all that stuff, I sat on James 1, 2 through 4. And that was kind of, that was my rock. You know, you fast forward a couple of years, I'm in San Quentin, lovely place, and kind of looking for the scripture that it is it, to help me explain, get me to in the right mindset of, okay, what am I learning here at San Quentin, sitting in this tiny cell, wanting to kill myself? Like, what is it about this situation that's going to carry me forward? And I came across this scripture, which is Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 5. And let me read this to you. Uh, Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the word of the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord, your God, disciplines you. And I looked at my situation. I'm in San Quentin, a horrible place. There is chaos all around me. There are horrible things happening all around me. Yet I was okay. I got sold up with a fairly normal person. Uh, Going to and from Chow was fairly tame for me. And there were a lot of people that were not having the same experience as I was. And I have to think that that was, he was looking after me. He was making me okay. And, And if I look back over the last two years, yeah, there were a lot of things that I lost. I got stripped down to to very little but what I got stripped down to were the essentials I still had my family I still had my house I still had my friends I still had my health what else do you really need everything else is extra so I knew the test that I was that I was in I knew that I was going to be stronger on the other end because of it and as much as it sucked in the middle of it I knew deep down that things were going to be okay. And really this this scripture really kind of put on my heart what was going on. I was in the desert, but I could see the promised land. I knew that I was going to get out of this situation and my new life in this new land was going to be amazing. Not easy. Nothing's, nothing handed to you. And you'll see that with some other scriptures that I'm giving you. But I knew that this was it. This was my desert. And I just had to get through this desert and things were going to be okay. So, you know, there's some days where you're reading the Bible to learn and study. There's other days where you're searching. And on one of the days when I was just learning and reading, uh, this other thing popped out to me. And this was huge because this pretty much summed up kind of everything that I had gone 
everything that had gotten me into the situation that I was in. Um, I'd been in therapy, like I said, so I knew I had ADHD. I knew I wasn't channeling it right. I was kind of just floating along instead of being structured and disciplined the way I am now. I was just kind of floating along so things would come up. And as you'll see with the scripture, it's it, I was able to get kind of carried off the path pretty easily because I didn't really have a path. So I kind of flowed with the wind, went with the waves and everything. And And this scripture really like nailed it for me. So it's uh, Matthew five thirty seven, and it's and it reads, "Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one." And when I look back at all the situations I was in, you know, ADHD, no ADHD, whatever, you you look at these situations, you know, they're not good situations, but you go, it's not a big deal, so you say no, but it's, you're like ninety nine percent no, you got a one percent yes. You could see, okay, this is really not that great of a thing, but no, but it's really, you know, 99% no, 1% yes. When you leave a crack, a crack of an open door is an open door. It may not be wide open yet, but it'll get there. And I talked about that in a, a blog and another one of these, what is the greatest piece of advice ever? And it's essentially let your yes be yes and your no mean no and be 100% hell yes or 100% hell no because everything in between will throw you off and drag you in the other direction. If you know it should be no and you want to say no, you make sure that that other person knows it's no. Because if they don't know it's no, they're going to keep pushing. And if you don't know it's no, you're going to keep listening. And eventually, you're going to get yourself to a yes. Eventually, that little crack's going to just kick the door. It's going to go wide open and you're screwed because you are not letting your yes be yes and your no mean no. So that was huge for me because that kind of just summed up everything for kind of what I was going through. Um, the last the last scripture that, it, and this is something that I use now. This is pretty much what I've used since I've, since I've been home. It is uh, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And it's basically basically the, the, the parable of the gold coins. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's not short. But it's, it's essentially the idea that God gives you these gifts. He gives you things to work with. And you can either sit on them or you can you can use them to advance yourself. And I am, I firmly believe that, that God gives us everything that we need to do whatever it is that we want to do. And a lot of us sit on our hands. A lot of us don't use what we have. A lot of us are hoping for this and hoping for that and praying for this and praying for that. And instead of looking down and going, okay, what else can I do? What am I not doing? What should I, what should I be doing? How much harder should I work? How much more should I work? How much smarter should I work? Instead, we sit back and wait for people to hand us crap and we're waiting for miracles to happen and we're waiting for this to happen or that to happen or this to be right or that to be right. Instead, instead of looking at, okay, I have all of these things at my fingertips and now is never been a better time to have things right at your fingertips with the internet and technology. If you are living in if you are living in a developed country, you have no excuse for not having whatever it is you're talking about. Whatever it is that you're looking for, there's no reason for you not to go go out and get it. You have gifts. You have gold coins available. You have all these things, yet you act like you don't. You wait for a miracle instead of looking at all the things that you already have and what you're not doing. You're looking for some like, you're looking for God to be a magician. And just poof, oh, here you go. Instead of going, oh, wait, you have all of these things available to you. It's time to use them. So so those are the four scriptures that I focus on. Um, I'm sure you can understand why each of those has has a, a special place in each of the different kind of phases of this whole thing. Um, if you, you know, I'm not trying to get overly religious on you guys, but it's something, it's questions that keep coming up because everyone, you know, I'll mention Christian church or whatever and different posts and those of you guys that are following me on Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and stuff know that, you know, pictures come up. I'm at church. So people just wanted to know, like, what are the things that I've kind of locked on to that, that have helped me along the way or what do I think about? So if you guys have any questions about, about this topic, hit me up. Snapchat seems to be the most effective. Um, Instagram's kind of getting their thing figured out. I'm still waiting for that to be a little bit more interactive than it really is, but it's a cool new thing. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, hit me up. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. And she was like, who?
And he was like, nah. and we was like, nah. 